I'd like to do a demonstration. It's uh, paper and pencil, or actually paper demonstration. We call energy in photons. It's a nice way to illustrate an abstract concept. The abstract concept being Planck's law or quantization of energy. Difficult topics, and we have a very nice way to bring home the idea that the energy depends on the frequency or the wavelength of light. And so what we have here is a little product. We call it our energy in photons card. And I'm going to show you what the top of it looks like, if you can see that. And what we have here is a card, and it's got color filters. We've got purple, indigo, green, yellow, orange, red. So we've got the colors of the spectrum starting from my right, Roy G. Biv, across there. Inside that, we've got a phosphorescent strip that has simply been taped down inside there. Phosphorescent is the glow in the dark that you know. So if we can just take the lights down for just one second, we'll see if we can see that, if it's glowing in the dark. And if we bring that back up, that may not be bright enough. We'll see later. OK, so what we have is that. Now, for demonstration purposes today, we've made large scale ones. So we sell this. It's called the Energy and Photons card. And I have a larger one that we've built. And we call this our demonstration model. Now, in this one, I've actually reversed, just to see if you were paying attention, the uh, colors as they go across. So starting on the right here, you have purple, blue, green, yellow, orange, and red. So Roy G. Biv starting on my left. And again, we have a phosphorescent strip inside there. Now, if I just have that phosphorescent strip open to the classroom lights, this will glow in the dark. Now, let's take, turn the lights down for just a second here. Can you see that strip glowing brightly? OK. If we can see, the whole strip should be glowing in the dark. Let's bring the lights back up. I'm going to close this. And now comes the thought part of this demonstration. What will happen if instead of allowing the lights to hit that phosphorescent strip directly, we do it so that the light has to go through these color filters, starting on my right with the purple and the blue and proceeding to the orange and red at the other end. What will happen if the light has to go through the filters before it hits the phosphorescent strip? What are we going to get? This is a great thought-provoking question to get for your students. And the one answer that you cannot accept from your students is, I don't know. If they don't know, they can guess. And they have to give a reason for their guess. So what are some possible guesses? Well, some students might say, OK, uh, well, obviously, it's got to go through circular things here. So I'm going to get little circles of light that are going to glow in the dark. That's one possibility, right? And I'm going to just get equal glowing on all of them. Is that a possible answer? Sure. What's another possible answer? Well, only some of the light is going to let enough light through to cause that strip to glow in the dark. So which ones? Maybe the red and the orange. How about the yellow? The yellow's real bright, right? So the yellow should let plenty of light through, and I should only see a glow in the dark under the yellow. But what about the energy of light? Does that matter? And what factors influence the energy of light? It is, is it the brightness or the intensity, or is it the wavelength? Each color lets through light of only a certain wavelength. And so the red one only lets through uh, red light it, from the white light. White light, remember, has all of the different wavelengths or colors of light. If we allow that light to pass through a red filter, then only the red light is going through. So what factors influence the energy of that light, and what does that have to do with the phosphorescent strip glowing in the dark anyway? So I have another one here that I've done. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the overhead projector here just for a moment. That's going to be my light source. Source. I have a second one that I have had sitting here in the dark, hopefully. And what I'm going to do is ask the lights to go off. I'm then going to briefly, for about five seconds, pass that uh, card over the overhead projector so that the white light has to is forced through the filters. And then we'll see what glows in the dark. And I'm going to put it up on the easel there at the end. So if we can take the lights down, please. Okay. 
And what I'm going to do is lift up my card. I am going to go one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to turn the overhead projector off. And the question is, where is it glowing? And can you see that yet? On my easel, are you focused on that? Okay. What are we seeing? Do we see all of the colors glowing? Or do we see some of the colors glowing? Can we take that down again? There, two circles of light only. Why are there two circles of light and none others? And which ones are glowing? When you're looking at on the screen there, the ones that are glowing are on your right is what you're seeing. What colors were those? Do you still see the color? Phosphorescence occurs because it absorbs energy from the light, excites an electron to an excited state, that excited state electron drops back down in a series of steps, and when it goes to the ground state, it emits a photon of light, and that's the emission. If we can bring the lights back up here, and let's look at where did we see the circles. The circles were on your right, which is my left, and so we were seeing them here under the purple and the blue only. There was no glow under the opposite side, okay? So you saw the light only under the purple and blue, not under the red and the orange. Why is that? It has to do with the energy of light. It has to do with the quantization of energy. Difficult concepts, but a great way to illustrate a very abstract concept. It turns out that for those electrons to be excited, they have to absorb a certain minimum amount of energy in discrete amounts. And that's based on the wavelength of light. Re uh, purple or violet is, high, is lo uh, uh, lower wavelength, higher frequency, higher energy light than red or orange or yellow. Okay? So the energy of that visible light increases going from red to orange to yellow to green and blue and violet. Violet being the highest energy within the visible spectrum. It turns out that the phosphorescent material absorbs light energy, but only if it's above a certain minimum amount of energy based on the, uh, the quantization of energy there. And so it has, and only the violet or the purple light has enough energy to excite the electrons. And then when, after those ex, uh, electrons have been exci excited to a higher energy level, they then do a little bit of radiationless transfer and then emit a photon. Photon, and that's the emission of light that we see as glow-in-the-dark phosphorescence. And again, it only occurs with light that is high enough energy. This demonstration, believe it or not, can even be used to explain the photoelectric effect, which is the experiment that Einstein did or explained in 1905 that really started uh, in many ways the quantum revolution in terms of physical chemistry, physics, and so on, in terms of understanding the energy of light, in terms of understanding the absorption of light by electrons within atoms, and so on. So we call that the light energy uh, demonstration. We're actually indebted to Rhonda Rice of Olathe, Kansas, who uh, gave us the idea for this demonstration, does a terrific job explaining it, and so on. Again, a great way to illustrate a difficult, abstract concept visually, concretely, with a phosphorescence. Energy in light, energy in photons. Thank you.